I am pleased to have the opportunity to bring to you a section in the series of Masters in Medicine. I'm going to talk to you about quality and patient safety. I'm Dr. Michael Henderson. I'm the Chief Quality Officer at the Cleveland Clinic, but I'm also a surgeon. And I say that because I think that is an important part in driving quality and patient safety at the present time. I'm going to divide this into three sections. First, I'll talk some about scope and infrastructure. Then I'll talk about creating value, a hugely important topic at the present time. And then the role of performance improvement in a quality and patient safety agenda. So really the first section in talking about quality and patient safety uh, is going to be about infrastructure. But I think one needs to do that in the context of what is quality and patient safety really all about. There's a big national drive in this space, and there are two key reports that came out from the Institute of Medicine over the last 15 years. First, to err is human, and then second, crossing the quality chasm. And really, out of those reports, this menu came that drives the agenda. It's about safe, effective, patient-centered, timely, efficient, and equitable care. And you'll often hear the six components of the Institute of Medicine reports being referred to in the quality and patient safety space. So this is one of the imperatives that put this on the radar screen. The second imperative really is the current national quality agenda. And this comes out of, the, of CMS and Department of Health and Human Services, and it's talked about as the triple aim, which talks about better health for the population, better care of individuals, and lower costs through improvement in care. And this really came into being over the last five years, really under the directorship of Dr. Don Berwick when he was the administrator for CMS. The third element in the public arena is that there is actually now a national strategy for quality improvement in healthcare. Again, this was first published in 2011, and really the architects of this were our current Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, Catherine Sebelius, and Dr. Don Berwick, again, when he was the administrator for CMS for a short period, and Dr. Don Wright, who as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Health was really the uh, writer of this national quality agenda. So these three bits really have all come together to drive the need for, the, uh, for patient safety and quality improvement to be part of what we do. So given that there's a national agenda, how do we do it? What I'd like to do is give you an, e an outline of how we've approached this as the Cleveland Clinic. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but it gives you a framework on which to build uh, how you want to do it in your environment. So the guiding principles that we have built this by are that you need content experts to guide the content. What do you need to do? What are the important things in the quality and patient safety arena? and to help build the programs. Very important is the second thing on here, and that's leadership commitment. Without leadership commitment, you're never going to have a successful quality and patient safety program. Making it patient-centered. You hear that term a lot, but practicing it is somewhat different. And it's always telling people to stop and ask the question, if I was a patient, is this what I want, would want done for me or about me when I'm in the hospital or, or anywhere in the healthcare system. And along with that, it are, it, it, all these programs need to be data-driven, just doing it because it feels the right thing to do without having evidence and collecting data, again, is not a good approach. And really, at the end of the day, the bottom line is that all caregivers, physicians, nurses, other support personnel, own quality and patient safety. Although I'm the chief quality officer of the Cleveland Clinic, I don't own quality and safety. I can help get the agenda in front of the frontline caregivers, but they are the owners of the activity and the actions that we take. So this is kind of how we've addressed it at the Cleveland Clinic. The infrastructure we put in place, and this sits under what we call our Quality and Patient Safety Institute, are these content experts. I have experts in quality, and a lot of that is around the things we need to do for public reporting of quality to CMS, the national public reporting, but also to all the other payers who are collecting data as well. Accreditation, how we keep the hospital open, 
uh, CMS and the Joint Commission accredit hospitals and increasingly accredit programs. Infection prevention, in clinical risk management, environmental health safety and performance improvement are the other content experts that make up my core team that helps build that infrastructure. And these sit centrally as we manage it. You balance this off with the local owners. And this is where I come back to all caregivers' own quality and safety. And for us, we have uh, local owners in our clinical institutes in the hospital or departments for many of you uh, who have different infrastructure and for our smaller regional hospitals. And the structure in that setup is made up of physician leads, usually with a quality director, a nursing director, and administrative support. And this really is the team that needs to help make things happen. These two have to work together, and this is a two-way street. Uh, initially, when I first started doing this, we were all sat under one umbrella, central control. That doesn't work. You've got to build that local ownership that people take, uh, take the programs, do the right things, but they've got to be targeted to get the right things on the agendas from the content experts. And we'll expand on this a little bit as we go on through this. The leadership commitment component to it. Again, uh, getting high-level leadership commitment isn't always easy, and it starts at the top. For most hospitals, all hospitals, the board, board of trustees, is usually the ultimate governing body. They have fiduciary responsibility, but ultimately they have responsibility for patient care as well. So engaging them with quality committees of the board, presentations of the board, educating them as to what quality and safety is about becomes very important. The executive leadership in hospitals, and then for us, our quality leadership team helps set the agenda. So leaders provide oversight. That leadership team in quality with that group of content experts I just outlined help develop the plans. They need to know what we have to do. What are the hot things for accreditation? What's going on in clinical risk? What's going on in infection prevention? Because setting the plan, you can't do everything, but having some logic in setting plans is really important. And these two groups need to set that plan. And then the implementation is the functional clinical units. Uh, with the frontline caregivers. So there's this cascade of responsibility, but again, I emphasize it all starts at the top. If leaders aren't helping drive the program, it's very hard to succeed. We touched on patient-centered as being really a, a key element of quality and patient safety. And I use these three elements as how patients think about it. If you ask patients what do they want, this is what they give you, and they give you them in this order. First, don't hurt me. Don't create harm. Second, heal me. They want a good outcome. And third, be kind to me. And this is the patient experience part of the activities. And I think it's a useful framework to think and use as you're putting programs together. And then I think as you think about the content experts I talked about a moment ago, all of these programs have elements of this. A lot of the quality outcomes are about infection, and again, that's sitting over here, but it's about things like readmissions. It's about mortality data. The accreditation issues are ma ma massively greater than they were a decade ago. The inspection of hospitals uh, from CMS and from the Joint Commission has really escalated. And a lot of these accreditation visits are being triggered by patient complaints and these kind of begin to tie together with clinical risk management and even some of the environmental health and safety things, things like life safety codes, how safe are the hospital environments. And then performance improvement helps tie all these together. So this is my core group of central support. But making sure that these aren't functioning silos and they work together, again, is hugely important. I brought up the issue of being data driven. And Deming, one of the fathers of performance improvement, said, if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. And that is just so true. And in setting our overall approach, it's about setting goals, understandable goals, simple goals, with very specific targets. And again, that's something I'll return to as we go on through this series. Having scorecards, how are we performing? 
Are we improving? Are we measuring the right things? And not being scared to adjust your goals, adjust your targets and scorecards. And then this favorite word at the bottom here of accountability. Easy to say, not so easy to do. Easier to do if you do these other bits right. If you have specific goals with targets, if you have scorecards, if you tell people what the expectations are and follow through on that, it's much easier to hold people accountable under those circumstances. So really, in, uh, at the current time, I think the scope of quality and patient safety in 2013 is thinking about the national agenda. I gave you the points there that there really is a national agenda now. 20 years ago, there was not. Making it a health system priority, this is what we want to do. This is the leadership commitment part of it, that quality and safety need to be up front and center. And if you're a patient, that's what you want. Creating value then becomes increasingly important. We're going to come to that in the next section of the series that I'm going to talk about. But a lot of it is based on having good quality outcomes and safe care. The high costs of healthcare in the country at the present time are largely created by excess use and poor outcomes. So creating value in the quality and patient safety space is important. And then driving it through performance improvement helps pull all that together. This concludes part one of the series on quality and patient safety, which is about the infrastructure and the imperative of why this is so important. I'll come forward then and talk a bit more about value and performance improvement in the subsequent uh, sections of this series.